Hi everyone, Bill Greenberg with Tonescholar.com. Today is Wednesday, February 23rd, 2011. Here's a brief summary of what we got going on the website, but to check out all the articles and the full articles, please go to www.phonescholar.com. And for any questions, send them to me at blogquestions at phonescholar.com. And I do have one update from yesterday's. Yesterday I talked about that the, um, uh, talking about the lay of the iPad 2 and stuff like that, and it may be coming out on um, March 2nd. Um, and that was incorrect. There's going to be probably an announcement about it on March 2nd, not coming out. Uh, but on the announcement, it should say when it's coming out, which is expected to be in April, unless the rumors are true that it gets pushed back. So I didn't want to go all that, but I just wanted to make an update. So here we go. AT&T versus T-Mobile 4G Showdown. And John Rettinger over at Techno Buffalo posted a video, which is a tremendous video, showing an AT&T phone versus the new uh, T-Mobile phone, the Galaxy S 4G versus the Inspire, uh, to see which one basically has better download speeds. Now, he did do it here in Southern California. Different areas may be different, but he did five tests over a two-hour period, and the T-Mobile phone really was a lot faster than the AT&T. Now, neither one of them even came close to the speeds that they're, they're touting with the HSPA Plus 4G. AT&T's touting 12 megabytes in download, and T-Mobile's touting up to 21 megabytes. Now, of course, those are bursts or maximum speeds. Uh, the speeds they were giving out, AT&T averaged about 1.3 megabytes per second in the download and 0.5 in the upload. An upload is when you upload things to your phone and download is when you download from your phone or vice versa. So upload is uh, documents and things like that. So uh, just to give you an idea. T-Mobile was 2.7 download, 1.5 upload. So as you can see, quite significant on the average. Now there were some skews. There was one, the AT&T had a 3.2 when all the other ones were around 1.3, 1.4, and when you look at the video, you'll see the first one is like 0.5 or 0.6, and then there's more. And why are there such differences there? Uh, as I will tell you, the reason that I had a technician, a very good friend of mine, technician Ruben from Verizon Wireless, when I used to ask him why these certain things happen, and he used to say it's sunspots, because there's really no way of knowing why that precise moment all of a sudden the speed jumps up. It is. It's just something in the system. There's less lag in the system, whatever it is, but that's why it's doing it. So uh, go ahead and take a look at the video. I think you'll find it very interesting for those of you who are looking into AT&T and T-Mobile. And of course, once Verizon phones come out in the 4G, I'm sure there's going to be a comparison for those, and we'll see how fast those are. So there you go. Next, Motorola Zoom, to buy or not to buy? And as I mentioned yesterday, it will be coming out tomorrow at Best Buy and at Verizon. The contracted two-year price, $600. The non-contracted, $800. There's not going to be a Wi-Fi version right away. When that does, that'll be added $400, $600. Um, and also, as I said yesterday, I was not sure if it's coming out with Flash or not. It will have no Flash support whatsoever until that 10.2 comes out in a few weeks. So that should not be an issue. But basically, J.R. Raphael, who's quickly becoming one of my favorite writers in this industry uh, from PC World, wrote about is it worth it or not. And some of the things he talked about is if you want Honeycomb, get the Zoom now. If your pricing is concerned, you might want to hold off. If you want a 10.1 inch screen, get the Zoom. So if you read the article, there's a number of these ads to tell you why or why not to get them. Um, also, just to let you know, the data plans are going to be the same as they have currently for the iPad. $20 for 1 gig, $35 for 3 gigs, $50 for 5 gigs, $80 for 10 gigs. Now, when this kicks up to 4G, which it should hopefully sometime in the next few months, there will there's supposedly going to be no charge for the upgrade, but there is all speculation that there may be data pricing changes. We'll have to find out then. So if you're looking to get the Zoom or thinking about it, great article read. It should help you out. Next, a whale of a bad analogy for bandwidth hogs. And we've been talking about the fact that Verizon is going to throttle or make those people that are using the top 5% that sign up from now on uh, throttle or slow down their speeds when they use that much. And so what this article does, and it's really great, it compares the fact that when someone goes to Vegas and is one of the top five users or spenders, they're called whales and they get all kinds of free stuff. But in this industry, the top 5% are being um, frowned upon or being punished. And actually, there's a big difference because whales in Vegas spend money, and they're the ones that have built all those casinos, along with us, who have spent, but they spend millions and millions of dollars, so they're way they, and the whole concept is, and if you read the end to the article, basically says, well, if these data hogs paid 
for all the data that they use, and yes, then they should be treated as whales. So it's a very interesting article. I think you'll really enjoy it. It gives a little better analogy of what it means with the when why these companies want to cut back on these people. So that'll help out also. And lastly, smartphone fund is latest flavor in ETF. Now, if for those of you who have way too much money or have money burning a hole in your pocket and you're saying, I need to get in on the smartphone revolution, I can make money, this is it. ETF is what's called an exchange, exchange trade fund. And what that is, it's a mutual fund that takes, in this case, uh, like 74 companies that are involved in making, developing, distributing smartphones, smartphone hardware, smartphones, uh, software, stuff like that. Uh, Nokia is one of them. And it puts it into a fund, and then you buy stock in the fund, just like almost any other mutual fund. And these ETFs, it's about a trillion dollar a year service, but they've been hit and miss a lot. Uh, and so if you want to better get an idea, I mean, it's $30 a share, so it's not like it's three cents a share or $3 a share. It's a pretty good starting price. So if seriously, it's not may not be a bad idea to get involved. They're saying this one could make it. So, but read the article if it's something that you're interested in. If you're a regular trader, again, something to definitely take a look at um, and get an idea. That's what I got for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day. I will talk to you tomorrow.